right, welcome back everybody. So this is video two, part two of my MG42 Gunner series. In the first video, I painted the spring oak camouflage, all the gear that went on him and the big, big old MG42 gun across his back. Uh, this video, we're gonna focus on the head and finishing up the project. So uh, face painting, helmet painting, uh, mounting to the base, all that good stuff. So uh, again, if you didn't see the first video where we covered the camouflage, I encourage you to go back and watch that one. Uh, but in this one, I think you're really gonna get a kick out of uh, how the face turned out. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. My first uh, 110 scale bust, so gave me a chance to paint on a little bit larger face than the 135th scale stuff that I normally do. Everything's being done in acrylics. Uh, didn't use any oils this time. Uh, no airbrush, just all hand brushed acrylic. So let's go ahead and get started in this video and check out video part two of my MG42 Gunner series, painting the face and helmet. So we'll start out with some dark green and some gray green, mix in a little bit of black and insignia blue to make the base color of the helmet. Airbrush that with an Iwata HPC airbrush thin down 50-50 with water. Uh, we'll get that down and use a lighter color, uh, lightened shade of the green to airbrush from the top to start some highlighting and pre-shading. And then uh, add a little bit of black in to darken it and go around the midsection of the helmet to again complete the uh, three-dimensional shading effect of the helmet. Then I take some clear satin and airbrush the entire helmet with clear satin to seal it in and get the finish I want. Next, I'm gonna do some chipping. So I'm taking a lighter shade of the green, thin down quite a bit and make some chips and scuff marks. Then taking some black, you go in and add a little speck in the little light areas and it comes off looking like uh, you've gone through the layers of the paint and uh, chipped the helmet, chipped and scuffed it and then do the final shading to the other minor details on the helmet. Now I wanna put the SS insignia on this helmet, so I printed the insignia out on some inkjet uh, water transfer decal uh, paper, and then take some frisket film and cut that out, that shape out over the decal and use the frisket film as a stencil to airbrush white on the side of the helmet because the decal itself obviously doesn't have any white ink. So once I use that airbrush frisket material to uh, stencil the airbrushing white on the side of the helmet, then I can take the decal, cut it out, put it in water, and then apply it over the white stencil paint area on the side of the helmet and you end up with a pretty decent little uh, SS insignia decal on the side of the helmet. One final coat of clear satin just to seal everything in and get the decal and the rest of the helmet to all have the same sheen level. And turned out pretty nice. Next, we go ahead and start on the head itself. Uh, this is why I wanted to kind of talk you through this one because this is a little bit more complicated than the first video and it's not quite as straightforward. Uh, so we're gonna work on some uh, very uh, difficult blending techniques. It all starts with laying down a dark base of mahogany brown. I like to start with a dark brown uh, to begin the shading and work my way up to the lighter colors. Now with a little bit of flat earth and black in my palette. By the way, I notice I'm using a, what we call a wet palette, just a piece of paper towel that has been wet, wetted and, and soaked in water. So that keeps my paint wet the entire time and it makes it a lot easier to uh, use thin down paint and without the brush constantly drying. Uh, so I start on the eyes, uh, use an off-white, uh, tint the white down a little bit darker to paint the white background of the eyes. And now I'm taking some light blue and filling in the iris areas of the eyes. Again, this wet palette makes this process a lot easier and it will make it uh, a much, much easier when we get into the layering end of the shading. Uh, it's really the only way to do it. Uh, I'll never go back to not using wet palette on faces again. So now with some black, just adding uh, the pupils in and then taking the mahogany and going back around and touching up all the areas where 
these eyeball colors uh, overlapped on the eyelids, so just doing a little cleanup. And the eyes are basically done, look pretty decent. So now I'm using some darker color, a little bit of black to go in and really crisping up the edges of the under the top eyelids uh, to give a little bit more definition. Uh, next I use flat flesh, mixed in with a mahogany and thinned down tremendously. I mean, you really gotta thin this down. Uh, I, I don't know, I would say probably 75% water and 25% paint would be my best guess and start doing this in layer upon layer upon layer to build up the shading. So you can see it's just almost like a wash. It's just very, very thin. And each time you go back over it with the same color, it, it, it builds up and gets thicker. So it's like 30% density or transparency and then builds up to 60 and then up to 90 and before you finally get to the actual paint color. At which point then you need to light the paint color and move and start the process all over again. So this layering effect of laying down about 30% transparent paint, layer upon layer upon layer, then lightening or darkening the, the, sh the shade and repeating the process is very time consuming, but uh, it's really the only way to get a, a decent blend for shading on faces. Now it doesn't look good initially, it looks kind of blotchy and streaky, but that's, that's okay, that's normal. Uh, when you start adding these layers over and over and over on top of each other, they start building up and creating a much, much smoother looking effect as you'll see when we finish this. So I actually look at this process as more of pre-shading. I'm not really concerned at all right now with the actual colors. I'm just using relatively flesh colors uh, just to stay in the right uh, tones. Uh, you could actually almost do this with black and white and grays, but uh, I choose to use mahogany and flat flesh to do all my pre-shading and uh, defining what areas are going to be shadows and what areas are going to be light. This is really important because this is when you actually start building the character of the face and defining uh, what the face looks like instead of, um, you know, making it look like just any person. If you want to make it look like a specific person, these little shading uh, steps are actually going to form a perceived contour and perceived personality to the person's face. So uh, you really want to take your time with this. Now I'm going to actually start introducing a little bit of color in it to help direct me and help me to understand where I need to shift my shading to. So with some red and some chocolate brown, I start bringing in a little bit more warmer tones and rosy tones into the face and uh, it, just, it just starts coming together, again, working with the wet palette, thin 30% opacity or transparency paints, and just layer upon layer upon layer. Now, oftentimes you'll find yourself having to go back and go over areas and lighten them or darken them uh, to reverse a step that you'd done earlier because uh, you think this cheekbone needs to, uh, be bright over here, but maybe that was too far, so you need to bring it back. And it's just a process of going back and forth and back and forth until it feels right. Paying a special attention to symmetry too, to make sure that the left and the right sides of the face are matching in both uh, hue and, and uh, lightness, as well as just general area of coverage. Now I'm using a little bit of orange brown to introduce some more warm tones into the face. Uh, you really want to make sure you don't just use light and dark uh, shades of one color. The face will become very flat looking. So uh, adding different shades, different flesh tones in there uh, from red to yellow to white to brown to gray uh, is what really uh, starts making it look more believable and more lifelike. So now with a little bit of a pinker tone go over the face. You want to be careful about, or over the lips, I'm sorry. You want to be careful about this step because obviously you don't want to make the guy look like he's wearing lipstick so just enough to separate it from uh, the rest of the flesh tones. So now I'm starting to get into really really trying to uh, finalize the blending and the, and the shades and clean up all of the brush strokes. Uh, now with a little bit of white, 
uh, this is where it really starts coming alive, hitting the, the hottest highlight areas, which are typically going to be the bridge of the nose, the, the top of the lip, the peak of the chin, and the, uh, the cheekbones right below the eyelid. Um, be careful about making the eyelids themselves too bright. It can kind of make the eyes uh, a little bit unnatural and give you kind of that deer in the headlights look. Adding a little bit of wrinkle and crow's feet around the eyes uh, using paint can really help add a lot more character and life uh, believability to your character's face. It's much more helpful if it's sculpted into the face, uh, but sometimes they're not. And that was pretty much the case here there really was no additional lines or, or, or anything like that around the eyelids, so I just chose to do it with paint to, make, uh, to give him a little bit more character. Adding some darker tones into the, the folds and the creases around the mouth that lead down from the nostrils uh, is going to start defining the areas a little bit better. Need to darken up under the eyebrow between the eyebrow and the eyelid. This again is obviously being done with the very thin layers of paint so that you don't get hard edges and just hit it over and over again until you get the density that you want for each color. You can probably begin to tell now how the multiple layers of different colors done in the very thin transparent uh, coverings is starting to blend together to create a much more smoother uh, tonal blending across his face so you don't see all the blotchiness and the uh, brush strokes and the streaking and all that that you saw at the beginning. Uh, when you do see some of that still there, you do what I'm doing now, which is taking very, very little amount of paint on the very tip of the brush. And you just kind of go in and stipple the edges where the different shades and the different hues meet. And that allows you to kind of softly blend one color or one shade into another. So at this point, it's looking relatively smooth. Still a little bit of touch up work to do, but it's, it's, it's getting in very close now. So this is about the time I start going on ahead and adding some sort of a five o'clock shadow, a beard of some sort, if, if that's what I want to do on the character. In this case, I do. Uh, I started out with a basically a grayscale beard. Now, this is a German character. I'm going to get, making him a blonde haired, uh, kind of stereotypical blonde haired, blue eyed character. So his beard should not be black, but I start out with this kind of blackish, grayscale beard first to do again somewhat of a pre-shading effect um, so I start defining the darker and heavier coated areas of the five o'clock shadow of this beard which is going to be across the lip down around the sides of the mouth and then under the chin uh, wrapping around the cleft of the chin and then we'll go back later with some other uh, more blonde hues and go over top of this in almost uh, like a glaze or a filter approach to try to turn this into more of a blonde beard or a light brown blonde beard as opposed to a black and white beard. I could have started with the brown beard uh, to begin with, uh, probably should have, but uh, this is just the way I chose to do it this time. Uh, and it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with the end result. But at this point right now, you see it, everything is still a more of a grayscale that kind of establishes the beard coverage. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint the hair, working from brown, dark brown, up to a bright blonde area for the, in the highlights. From chocolate brown, I, I moved to Iraqi sand color 
and ultimately some yellows and some whites to bring up the, the highest detail in the strands of hair. This is a little bit of overkill because his helmet's gonna wrap down over his hair and you're really not much gonna be able to see that, but um, you just can't leave it unpainted. So now that's when I add the desert yellow and then ultimately we'll be mixing some white in there and just get some real bright strands of hair. Now I'm starting to do this filtering process of the blonde color, the uh, blonde brown color over top of the grayscale beard. So you can see that uh, just lightly uh, putting thin blonde colors over top of the grayscale beard retains the basic shading lightness of the beard, but it just adds a little, just enough color to it that it doesn't look like a black beard. Even on a blonde beard, guys typically don't have uh, very, very, or uh, on blonde, guys with blonde hair typically don't have really bright blonde beards, so they're still going to have a relatively dark beard. But I think this is uh, right about where I want it to be color-wise for the beard. Now, if you find this process tends to wash out some of your shading from the grayscale, approach that's okay just go ahead and uh, take that uh, beard color and use your blacks browns and whites to make some brighter and darker tones and reshade and, and uh, get that kind of highlight areas and shadow areas back in if you lost any in the process but that's looking pretty decent here And finally, some uh, eyebrows. So blonde eyebrows, not real dark. Uh, just laying a, a hint of eyebrow across there. Again, it's gonna get mostly covered by the helmet. So now we gotta do the chin strap using German Black Brown to begin with, and then a few lighter shades of that to do some highlighting, and uh, then do some final details over the buckle. Face is pretty much done, uh, never fully done. It seems like I keep going back later and, and doing minor tweaks here and there. But all in all, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with where it stands at this point. Time to move on. Uh, next step would be then to take a little bit, a few drops of gloss varnish and, and put them over the eyeballs, the eyeballs themselves and just the lips to give them a little bit of a more natural wet look. Take some uh, glue and glue the helmet on. Be very careful not to get glue on the face. And looking pretty good.
Now we glue the head onto the body and we have our completed figure. Didn't turn out too bad at all. Next we take the base, drill a hole in it and glue the figure post down in. Add the nameplate, which by the way, I also made using the same uh, decal sheet that I, inkjet decal sheets that I used in the earlier steps. That's it. The MG42 gunner is done. So uh, first video, we did all the camouflage and the gear and the gun. Second video of this one, we got the head painted, mounted on and finished up the project. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Might have learned something or was inspired to uh, tackle a project like this yourself. If you'd like to see more of my projects and my videos, my how to's, visit my YouTube channel. Give me some subscribes and likes and follows there, as well as my Facebook page scale nerd on facebook uh share a lot of projects on there so until the next time guys thanks again for visiting come back and see me again soon and safe and happy modeling everyone take care now